Nikon are continuing to update and add new features to their existing Z mount cameras, and now the Nikon Z8 has been updated to firmware version 3. Firmware version 3 brings with it lots of new adjustments for stills and for video and also customization. I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that I find really useful and hopefully give you more insight as to what you can do with firmware version 3. When it comes to the video dedicated adjustments, when the camera is in video, you'll still see the improvements to autofocus, where it'll give you the ability to use the subject detection option with manual focus lenses. But more specifically for video, View Assist now has new tonal characteristics, giving you a more even and consistent exposure when using View Assist and shooting analog. You'll now have a dedicated menu for the image quality when using high speed frame capture. That means that you can change the image quality from JPEG normal to JPEG fine when making use of the dedicated continuous 15, 30, 60 or 120 frame rate options. You will also find that you have a new continuous 15 frames per second option when making use of that high speed frame capture. This is a feature that I've been waiting for for a really long time and it allows you to specifically limit where the camera can focus and where you don't want it to focus. When you want to make use of the in-body focus limiter, you can set a nearest and farthest, and you can either do this by dialing in the direct meters yourself if you know the distances you're working with, or you can make use of the AF on button to set your nearest, and you can make use of the shutter button to set your furthest distance. The in-body focus limiter is gonna be a great addition for any of you that are shooting in difficult scenarios for wildlife, sports, moving subjects, where you found that the focus is either jumping to the foreground or to the background, and means that you can really limit exactly where you want your camera to focus. Thanks to firmware version 3, the Nikon Z8 now supports flexible color picture controls. These can be created, edited, and adjusted by making use of Nikon's NX Studio software and then stored on your camera via a memory card. With flexible color picture controls, it means that if you have a specific style when it comes to editing your images, you can load that directly into your camera meaning that you can see that all the time and not having to wait till you see it in post. They can also be added in video, meaning that your creative style can be used for photography and for video that you shoot on your Z8. Now make use of a new setting called Maximum Aperture Live View. So what this does is it forces the aperture of the lens to be set to its maximum. If you're using an f1.2 lens, it means it would be set to f1.2, regardless of your aperture setting. This means that you can see in much lower light conditions, makes it easier for things like focus peaking, manual focus, and also is a really great way of allowing your camera to even autofocus faster in really low light conditions as well. However, this setting does not affect the aperture that you've selected. If you're shooting at f8, it will still stop down to f8 when you take the shot. It's just giving you that better performance during the live view by making sure that the view is vastly improved by adding way more light when your lens is set to its maximum aperture. There have been a couple of new additions when it comes to autofocus, bringing the Z8's autofocus system more in line with existing Nikon Z mount cameras. Firstly, you can now make use of subject detection alongside your manual focus lenses. This means that you can use your manual focus lenses like you normally would, but also make use of subject detection to show you where the eye or the face of a subject is in front of you. Second, you now have new options when it comes to customizing wide area C1 and C2. You can go much closer to the edge of the frame, left to right, and also top to bottom, giving you the ability to really choose your designated area of your frame and making sure your camera is going to focus exactly where you want it to when you customize wide area C1 or C2. Pixel Shift has had some new additions, meaning that you'll be able to use Pixel Shift alongside auto exposure bracketing and focus shift shooting. This means that you can shoot a pixel shift image with different exposures, meaning that you can cover the whole high dynamic range of the scene in front of you, meaning you don't lose a highlight or a shadow. And when it comes to focus shift shooting, you can combine those images to create a fully focus stack pixel shift image, giving you the higher resolution and sharpness from front to back. For those of you that want to make use of auto exposure bracketing whilst using pixel shift, you'll access this in the pixel shift shooting menu. You'll be able to find a new option that says auto exposure bracketing. This will let you choose the number of images that you want to bracket. You can choose up to a total of nine frames, or you can even choose to shoot just underexposed or overexposed images up to a maximum of three frames. And then you can choose the increment, the total exposure that you want to bracket between each frame, whether you want that to be one stop or two stop or less or even more. 
Those bracketing settings will then be applied alongside the rest of the pixel shift shooting options you've chosen, and they will then start when you press the shutter button. For those of you that want to use pixel shift and focus shift at the same time, you would access this by first of all going to the focus shift shooting menu. That will then bring up a new option that allows you to access the pixel shift options. You can then choose your pixel shift options alongside the focus shift shooting options. And once you press start, the camera then applies the pixel shift and the focus shift at the same time. When you're using pixel shift shooting and focus shift shooting together, what the camera will do is it will take each pixel shift image, if you've chosen 32 images, that's 32 images that it will take back to back. Then it will shift the focus and then take the next 32 images, shift the focus, the next 32 images, and so on, allowing you to create that 180 megapixel pixel shift image and then go ahead and focus stack to give you the sharpness from front to back. Using pixel shift and focus shift at the same time is going to produce quite a significant number of images and that means it's not going to be for every photographer but it is going to be incredibly useful for people who want to create high resolution focus stacked landscape images, architectural images or also using it for things like macro photography and product where your resolution and your detail really matters. Firmware version 3 for the Nikon Z8 has lots of new features and improvements, whether it's the adjustments to pixel shift, the improvements to autofocus, or the new flexible color picture control options. It means the Z8 is more versatile than ever before. So make sure you update your Nikon Z8 to firmware version 3, and I hope that you enjoy the new features.